what happens if we have no pipe sizing? This will be typical problem type number three. Recall that the friction loss depends on the friction factor. The friction factor depends on Reynolds. Reynolds depends on velocity and velocity depends on the size of the pipe. So we will not have volumetric flow rate and therefore we will not have a velocity. If we don't have a velocity, what do we do? We will need to propose several sizes on the pipe and then calculate the velocity of each pipe and finally do the same that we've done before, calculate the left side and make sure it's equal to the right side. If it is not, you need to recalculate everything. If it is right, you're done. Let's do this little exercise right here. Let me explain you what's happening. You got the pipe steel, you got the volumetric flow rate, you got a thousand feet, it's, and you don't know the diameter. You got the water uh, temperature, which is or has these properties, and they tell you that the change in pressure per this each thousand feet is 10 psi. It's steel, so I can find the roughness, and they tell you find the diameter of the system given it's a scheduled AT uh, pipe. So before actually doing something, let me write the mechanical energy equation here. I can cancel the, uh, the pressure because they are telling me there's a pressure loss and I know by theory that point A and point B are going to have different pressures. So nope, I cannot cancel pressure. I can cancel height because they are in the same level. I can cancel Velocities because even though I don't know the diameter, I know it's the same diameter. So I'm left with the loss of friction and the change of pressure. Now, just a reminder that the loss of friction is given by the velocity, and the velocity needs the volumetric flow rate divided by the area, which at the same time I need the diameter. Not only that, for the friction factor, I need the Reynolds number, which depends on velocity, which also depends on diameter. Reynolds number also depends on the diameter, and the relative roughness also depends on the diameter. So this is the first time relative roughness is a problem to consider. So let me not fitting, so I only have friction loss due to pipe wall. Recall that by definition the friction loss in a pipe wall is the velocity head that multiplies the friction factor times the length divided by the density. Let's call this equation number one. And let's calculate the energy loss from one. So I got a basis of length which is 1000 feet. I changed that to meters. It's almost 305 meters. I have here. Density I have it. Yes, it's water. So if I have, or I may, I will calculate HF, which is about 68.9 joules per kilogram. Keep in mind this number. Now guys, let's set Reynolds number. I have everything but diameter and velocity, so this right here I have it. Let's call this equation number three. And relative roughness, I know it's still, so I have the roughness. The diameter, I don't know it, so leave this as a function. Number four. And velocity equals volumetric flow rate divided by area, which at the same time, if you change it to diameter terms, is this. I got Q, yes, I got Q. P is a constant, four is a constant, and the diameter, I don't know it, so let me have equation number five here. So you can see I have plenty of equations. I have equation number one. I have equation number two, I have equation number three, four, and five. We, are, uh, we want to calculate the diameter, but the only thing to do is actually propose a diameter, calculate all the equations, for example, velocity, relative roughness, with velocity I calculate the Reynolds number, with Reynolds number and relative roughness I calculate friction factor, with the friction factor I calculate the friction loss. And with the friction loss calculated, I can compare it with the actual value, which I already have, which is right here. And if I find out that this is 
pretty near to this value, I'm done. So, yeah, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Well, there's one trick. Normally, instead of just inventing diameters and say one, one inch or five inch, why should I choose one, two or five inch diameter? Well, the the normal operation in fluids is one meter per second. So find out the diameter diameter that that will be, and the diameter I find out is this one right here, which is five and one fourth inches. So let's do it. Wait, oops. Here's the table. Yeah. So instead, I did not the choose this one right here. Instead, I'm going to do the approach of randomly guessing the diameter. I try two inches first. Since it's 80 schedule, be sure to find out the inner diameter. I change the inner diameter to meters. Now calculate the velocity with the equation number five, which is right here. Velocity depends to the square of the diameter, so I got this divided by diameter to the square. Diameter to the square is this. So my first velocity, guessing this size of pipe, is 7.4. Now let me calculate the Reynolds number, which is right here. You remember I calculated Reynolds number in terms of diameter and velocity. I already got diameter. Yes, I choose it to be two inches. The velocity I just calculated right here. So I got this number and this number, I plug it right here and right here. And I got the Reynolds number of 9.3 times 10 to the 5. Now, calculate the relative roughness. We have diameter, yes. So I got 9 times 10 to the minus 4. From Moody's diagram, I'm not going to put it right here, but I find out that my friction factor is 0 0.019. Now I go to equation number 2. No, sorry, for now I go to equation number one. Substitute the velocity, which I already have. Length, I already have it. Diameter, I propose it. And the friction factor, I just found it. So doing this, I got this value, 3173. Let's compare it with the actual value right here. 3000 doesn't even... It's not even near to 68, so that was definitely not my diameter. So I need to decrease velocity to decrease. So get access to plenty of problems. Go to the practice section right here and you will be able to see that I have plenty of problems. Actually, I got almost 140 problems about friction, pumps, uh, mechanical energy equation, Reynolds number, pressure drop, all relevant to mechanical energy is here. Empty and tank to reach Ellis law, Bernoulli's law, and so on. So go on a register and you will have access to plenty of problems right here. You need to do the analysis guide. What do you need to decrease? Velocity. So I decrease the velocity, I'm going to decrease the friction loss. So how do I decrease velocity? Increasing the diameter. So I try 4 inches, that's 3.82 inner diameter, I change it to meters, once again I calculate velocity with this equation, and once I have velocity and diameter, I plug this in, and I got this Reynolds number, recalculate the epsilon divided by diameter, I got this, and checking the diagram, I got 0 0.018, I substitute in this equation, F, L, B, I got everything, and I got a value of 100, which actually compared to the 3000 is way better. 100 yields per kilogram, but I need 70, so I'm still a little bit far. So what I'm going to do is to propose 5 inch. So I got, that is 4.81 inner diameter. I change those inches to meters, then calculate with equation number 5 the velocity. With this velocity, recalculate Reynolds number, I already got the diameter, so I can plug both variables, I got new Reynolds number, I recalculate the relative roughness with this diameter right here, have it to be this number here, and I go back 
and I find the same friction factor, that's fine, means we are actually converging to some values, and then if I solve for this, and I got 32. So now, before I got 3000, then I got 100, and now I'm 30. So I must be in between. So let me make an analysis. I'm between 4 and 5. So you could choose 4 1 4, 4 1 half, but I will. I'm pretty sure that the value is between these two and a half, and because the value is 70, and you got 100 with 4, you got 32 with 4, so the difference here is 30, the difference here is 40, so I would say it's either 4 1 half or maximum 4 1 or 3 fourths. So these two pipes will satisfy the system in order to have a pipe in which you have a pressure loss of 10 psi per thousand feet and having this volumetric flow rate, if you put this pipe to be 4 inches, you will have a friction loss of 30, no, 68, sorry, it's right here. So we're done, that was the whole exercise. Now imagine, well let me show you this in another exercise. Now let's imagine this type 3 exercise. We have a pressurized tank, velocity here is 0, we got a pump, we got the length, we got this length as well, we got this elbow, we got this valve, this pipe right here, and this is atmospheric, and we got the height. We got everything to set our system, but we don't know the volumetric flow rate, or do we know it, where is it? We know it. Do we know the sizes of the diameters? No, we don't know it. So we are, once again, type 3 problem. We got everything. We got the efficiency of the pump, the energy of the pump, all the fittings, and the gauge pressure in this tank. I know it's a steel, so I can calculate the relative roughness. Uh, I got the properties. So as you can see, I got everything but my diameters. And you know that to calculate velocities, I will need volumetric flow rate, which I have it, divided by area and recall that the area of the cylinder is only calculated with diameter so from this problem right here let me, uh, let me erase all the data that I can throw away so there's not going to be velocity because both are static no workout, uh, there is a pump, yes, there is a change in gravity, yes so I'm left with this, equation number one. Now one thing I can do is find out how much friction loss do I have right here. So let's do it. I have friction loss due to fittings and friction loss due to pipe. Velocity to the square, velocity to the square, F times L and D, and the addition of all the K values. So I can actually take out velocity to the square and add all these addition terms. And what will I ask you to do or propose you is propose a diameter, with that diameter calculate the area, with that area calculate the velocity with the Q divided by A equation. Now that you have velocity of the pipe, you can calculate the Reynolds numbers in the pipe. You can calculate the relative roughness because you already have the diameter. You can calculate the friction factor which is function of Reynolds and relative roughness and once you calculate that you can calculate the friction loss in the walls which is this once you have velocity you have the diameter you have the length you got the case and you got the F you can calculate all this right here and now go and compare with equation number one which is sorry this is equation number one and equation number two does it make sense? We will actually have this will be a number. This will be a number. This will be a number. So if you send this to the left, you will get one number equals HF. So you got equation number one. 
and you got the equation number two so let's say this was maybe I don't know 500 so propose one diameter size and you calculate one velocity you calculate one friction factor you calculate this number right here plus this number right here and you say that equation number two this is equation number one you see that the equation number two is I don't know maybe 100 you will need to increase the velocity so once again choose another diameter that is smaller so you got a, a greater velocity with the greater velocity calculate Reynolds number with the diameter calculate the relative roughness and now find the friction factors because it's function of Reynolds and relative roughness recalculate number two which is this this and this and this recalculate this and compare once again with the value on the equation number one if equation number one equals the number we calculated in equation number two you are set and you are done that diameter was the correct diameter once again guys if you need more problems go directly to part number one in compressible flow go to the solve problem section go to this block AFD number six you will find quizzes also slideshows and more importantly solve problems so good luck because we are done with serious piping this was a free preview you want to get full access go to my incompressible flow course the link is in the description of the video you will get all access not only that you get a very straightforward uh, user-friendly interface so for instance you were analyzing or studying pumps you have it here the pump block and then you have the sections if you're for example studying the types of pumps you can go here and you have all the classes right here not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these so for instance if you were studying positive displacement pumps the video is right here you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here centrifugal pumps which is a very important topic in this course you have it right here